A few days ago, we got some really cool gameplay for Assassin's Creed Origins. There's also a little bit of other information that I'm going to cover in this video as well. But today's video is mainly about the new gameplay that was released, which was the 10 minutes of high level Assassin's Creed Origins gameplay. And I've got to say, this gameplay really hyped me up for the game even more. I'm going to cover a lot of the news that came out recently in this video. You know, little small bits here and there. But for the majority of the video, I'm going to be talking about the 10 minutes of high level gameplay that we got on IGN first. I'll leave a link to the original video in the description if you guys want to go watch that. It's got Ashraf and, you know, one of the people at IGN talking a lot about the game's mechanics. And it's a really interesting video and gives you a great insight into the loot system and the leveling system of the game. And it's a really great video. I recommend you guys go watch it. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight into the video. So I'm going to get kind of these smaller pieces of information out of the way first and then at the end of the video we can talk more about this 10 minutes of high level gameplay and I'll slap it up on screen when we do talk about it. But for now we're going to talk about the very small pieces of information that was released over the last week or so because they are pretty interesting nonetheless. Now first of all we have this from the original Gamescom gameplay that Game Informer had and we actually get to see a little look at the detective style mode in the game because obviously the quest he's doing right now he's helping out with some form of you know van vandalism that's happened to this NPC's house, everything's destroyed around the area, and he's kind of checking around on the ground. And as you can see, when he actually starts to do the detective work, he had, there's actually a reconstruction of the event that happened. I don't know, it looks really weird. I don't know what this is down to. Is this Animus Pulse? Is this him using Eagle Vision? Or is it just him simply reconstructing it in his mind? And this is how the Animus rebuilds the memory of him reconstructing it. I literally have no idea what this could mean. Like, I, I don't know. It's kind of reminiscent of the detective mode from the Batman Arkham games and how you can kind of reconstruct what happens by the evidence given in the area. That's what this reminds me of a lot and it's also a new take on the murder mystery style thing in the other Assassin's Creed games. However, I reckon this has got a whole lot more depth. Like, I did all of the murder mystery things in Assassin's Creed Unity, like the investigations, and they were really bad. They were really bad. Like, there just wasn't really any depth to them whatsoever, and they weren't interesting at all. The only reason I was doing them was to get 100% sync in the game to get the achievement. Like, that's all I really cared about. I didn't play the ones in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I'm pretty sure they were exclusive to PS4 anyway. And obviously, I play all my Assassin's Creed games on Xbox one so I didn't really get a chance to play those and apparently they were really good apparently that was one of the good things that was done in Assassin's Creed Syndicate but I still reckon there's room for improvement and I reckon they did do better with Origins I'm kind of excited to see what the various different investigations are in this game so something that many people have complained about in the various demos that we've seen of Assassin's Creed Origins and the various different pieces of gameplay is the lack of ambient music. And I've got to agree, there's not an awful lot of ambient music. But on Twitter, Sarah Schachner, I hope that's how you pronounce her name. I, I really, really do. I don't want to pronounce that wrong. That'd be bad. But Sarah Schachner said on Twitter that for those concerned about ambient music in AC Origins, there is lots. And she was hired to do the combat slash cult music in AC Unity. Believe it or not, the soundtrack for the combat music and the co-op music in Assassin's Creed Unity wasn't that bad. It's not groundbreaking, you know, the best soundtrack I've ever heard. It's There's definitely many more different soundtracks that are like a million times better than it, but it's still good music and it serves the purpose well nonetheless. So it's good to say that the soundtrack of Assassin's Creed Origins is in good hands. And the, the fact that there's more ambient music in general is a lot better because you can't really have an open world game and like have the atmosphere set with no ambient music. It's not really... So they're not the same. Ambient music really does set the tone for when you're traveling through the open world. If you turn ambient music off, it completely changes the feel of the game. It's really insane how much of an impact music has on video games. And if it, the game doesn't have a good soundtrack, then a lot of the time the overall experience is less enjoyable. And from what we've heard from the pieces of music in Assassin's Creed Origins so far, especially things like the main theme, the music does sound like it's got a good standard to it, which makes me very happy because a lot of the recent soundtracks have been very, very throwaway, very forgettable, and I just hope the soundtrack has as much quality as the Jesper Kidd soundtracks and Lorne Balfe, like stuff like that with Assassin's Creed 2, the Ezio Trilogy and Assassin's Creed 3. Those games had really good soundtracks and they were memorable, opposed to just being forgettable random stock combat music or just action music. The recent games just haven't had very memorable soundtracks and I hope this is remedied in Assassin's Creed Origins. Alright, so now we've got the small details out of the way, it's time for the more 
juicy stuff in this video and this is the new 10 minutes of IGN first gameplay which shows high level Bayek with his new armor his new weapons and abilities and this is only one of the combinations that you can do with all of the various different gear and abilities that are in the game which is really cool and that's one of the things that made me incredibly excited anyway the gameplay starts off with them taking on a basically like level 38 to level 44 which is in the end game of Assassin's Creed level 40 is the highest level you can get to and it's showing off them taking it on at level 1 Bayek with the initial gear you get in the game as soon as you drop into the open world. And it doesn't really go too well for them whatsoever. So it shows that if you're a low level, it's not a good idea to take on like enemies of a higher level than you. And that really should be obvious to everyone. It's like any other RPG. If you take on enemies that are a higher level than you, you won't be able to kill them very easily. You're going to have to level up and come back to it at a later point. And you can see here, Bayek is just slashing at this guy. He's slashing, doing all he can. And it's doing next to no damage to this enemy and the enemy picks him off pretty fucking easily so you know you really should level up before taking on these high level targets the world isn't restricted as Ashraf says at the beginning that's how they managed to get there as level one that the world isn't restricted whatsoever so as soon as you get dropped in the world you can go to anywhere you want really which is really how it should be it shouldn't cut off any areas because you're not a high enough level it's stupid you should be able to make your own mistakes go to high level areas make a mistake die and and then you can learn from it and you can build your character and level up so you can take that on at a future date. After they die playing as the level 1 Bayek, it th then switches to a level 38 Bayek with a lot of gear and weapons that do a high amount of damage. They have all of the abilities unlocked just to show how powerful you can become in the end game of Assassin's Creed Origins. I really like the outfit they're wearing. It does look really, really nice. I don't know if this was actually included in the gameplay the other day from Yorupta with, you know, the Persian commander outfit and all that stuff because those looked kind of a bit bad, you know, in the little icon. We saw them and they didn't look awfully impressive at all. But this one in game looks really, really nice. And it's just one of the outfits in the game. There's going to be loads more that you can add to your character. And you can also upgrade your gear and your weapons. And it's just awesome the amount of combinations you can do and how you can actually personalize it to yourself. This specific build shown in this video seems to be very combat oriented with very powerful bows and weapons. However, for the most part, it's a very agile setup because it has the twin blade and it's very light and he does a lot of dodging and stuff like that there's no specifically you know heavy weapons that are used in this video i know that when i play the game i'm going to be using the heaviest weapons in the game and hitting the hardest because that's how i play every game it's kind of like my build in every game i go for a very heavy kind of character that does a lot of damage however i'm definitely going to try out all the builds in the game there is to offer because there are so many different builds you can do in this game with all the skills you can use in the game all the perks all the armor all the weapons Weapons. There's so many different combinations you can use to make it perfect for your playstyle. As you can probably tell from the gameplay as well, the combat is incredibly difficult. And Ashraf Ismail said himself that for people that aren't skilled in the game, it's going to be very difficult. So for everyone playing it for the first time when it comes out, it's going to take a lot of getting used to to be able to become good at the combat. You can't just press a button and instantly kill everyone in the surrounding area. You have to actually think and have the patience to strike at the right moment. And I'm pretty happy about this. I know there's many people that are angry with the combat. There's Definitely improvements that can be done to the combat without a doubt. In the next AC game, I hope they keep this kind of formula, but they iron out all of you know the bad animations, the jankiness of it, and just stuff like that. There's definitely improvements that can be done to it, but overall, I'm happy with it, and I think it looks quite fun and rewarding if you do have the patience to you know defeat your enemies with skill, opposed to defeating them by watching a bunch of animations. From what we've seen from the gameplay, each archetype of weapon and each weapon has its own unique stance where you can do a special move with it, which is kind of like Dark Souls. Souls. There's this thing in Dark Souls called Weapon Arts, which is for every single weapon in the game, and it allows you to perform a certain special move that does more damage or gives you an ability, such as something that affects your movement, like a dodge or something like that. And they're going with this kind of formula in Assassin's Creed Origins. Now, obviously, the more common weapons are going to have very, very basic movesets that aren't awfully unique, but as you get into the legendary category, obviously, it's going to be a lot more unique, and there's going to be weapons that have their own particular movesets, which is really cool. It's 
seems that they've taken a lot of inspiration from Dark Souls in this game. Like, if you look at how he parries this guard, it's a very similar parry to the Dark Souls games, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's not as polished as the Dark Souls games, because they've been working on those games for many, many years, and From Software have been able to refine that format in many different games. But it's a good step in the right direction. Difficult combat with nice mechanics, and I'm very happy about this. A slight concern that me and other people in the community have is the focus on bows in the game. Now, obviously, it's fine having bows. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, but it seems like whenever he gets into a situation playing the game in which he feels threatened by the enemies and feels like he's gonna die, he just whips his bow out and kills a load of them. Now, I don't know if this is OP because I haven't personally played the game myself, but from what I've seen in this gameplay, he whips out the five-shot bow and one-shots a bunch of people, like, in crowd control. It's kind of very weird, and it kind of makes the combat, like, the rest of the combat very obsolete because he's not trying. He's just grabbing his bow out and shooting people instead of actually fighting with a normal combat system. Obviously, it's a tool you can use in the game, so there's nothing wrong with him doing that, but I just feel like it's a bit too powerful. There's something about it that I just think is a bit ridiculous, how he just grabs it out whenever he needs to, you know, kill a few enemies that are bothering him, and then he goes back to the normal combat. Because last time I checked, that's not really how bows are meant to be used. They're not meant to be used as a form of, like, just a gun, basically. It's meant to be used at long range or in stealth situations, and I think the bow mechanic is being abused slightly here. However, obviously, this guy's playing how he wants to play, and it just shows how you can personalize your playstyle a whole lot more. Personally, I'm not going to rely on the bow too much. I'm going to actually fight with my weapons, because that's what I see as more fun. But if you guys want to use bows, as Ashraf said, you could play the whole game with bows and play it like a third-person shooter. Something that I think is really cool here is he whips out a fire-based weapon, which looks awesome. Like, it's a staff with fire on the end of it. I think it looks really cool. Now, I don't know if this is because we can apply fire to weapons in the game through crafting, which I think would be a really nice addition to be able to add fire to my weapon. It'd just make it look all fucking badass and flamey and shit. But it might also just be because this specific weapon has fire on the end of it. I don't know. Ashraf does make a point that fire is very powerful in this game, so it might mean that we can add fire to weapons in the game to make it do lasting damage to enemies, because as you can see here, there's actual small numbers coming off the enemies when he hits them with this weapon, which are orange, which signifies fire damage. I'd love to be able to add fire to like my sword in the game in crafting. I think that'd be a really nice addition and would also increase that sense of, you know, it's very personal to you because you can craft your weapons to the point where you could choose if you want to add fire to them or not. As we can see at this point in the video, we get a nice representation of the adrenaline mode in the game and it looks fucking insane. Bayek is like going mental at this guy. He's fucking flying around. He's smashing him up and shit and it looks really strange like it's on steroids of some sort. I don't know how this fits in canonically to Assassin's Creed, but as you can see, he took that guy out really fucking quickly. Anyway guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to round up all the recent information that has come out for Assassin's Creed Origins, especially that IGN first gameplay. Again, I will leave a link in the description to the original gameplay, because Ashraf Ismail does talk about some interesting things in that, and it's definitely worth the watch, so I'm going to leave it in the description for you guys. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead and like and subscribe for more gaming news and content in the future. And also, remember to comment down in the comment section below telling me what you guys think of the new gameplay and all the new information in this video. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.